Hello, everybody. This is Tyler Preston 20, and I'm here with a really special guest tonight, not tonight, this morning, whatever kind of time you're watching this, with MRA Janet Bloomfield. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Tyler. <laughs> no problem. Like, the first thing I want to ask you is, like, why Judgy Bitch of all the names out there? Well, it kind of comes from a joke on mommy boards. Like, there, no one is a bigger bigger and more judgmental bitch than a new mother. She always thinks she can tell other people how to do things. And um, that's kind of where it, it came from, that, that my, my friend would call me a super judgy bitch. And it's sort of like, you know, tits or get the fuck out is, is, a, is a 4 <laughs> thing. Judgy bitch is a mommy board thing. And it does, it does kind of fit. <laughs> because you kind of judge feminists a lot? Yeah, just a little bit, and sometimes I'm a I'm a real bitch about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, how long have you been at MRA? Um, I would say for about maybe three years. I didn't even know what that word was. I was very judgmental of feminism. I accidentally took a women's studies degree. I signed up for film theory. That's really helpful, right? What a smart degree to take. But it's actually a gender studies degree by stealth. They don't tell you that when you go in, that almost all of the theories you're going to be using are feminist theories. And I was quite skeptical of a lot of the theories at the time that I was learning them. Uh, so really, I started as an, as an anti-feminist and being super critical of feminism. And that led me into the men's rights movement because it's, it's very, very difficult to look at the rights and the social conditions of men without immediately seeing that feminism plays a huge role in creating negative stereotypes and, and propagating really negative growth messages almost exclusively from feminism. So it was a really natural fit for me. Right. I think that many people who call themselves MRAs say that because of feminism, that's why they want to advocate for men's rights, because feminism have been sitting on men's rights for a really long time. For a very long time. We have a new prime minister. I call him Prime Minister Ken Dahl here in Canada. He was elected because a lot of women thought he was cute. And then he, he selected his cabinet um, based on the federal cabinet, based on their genitals and not their qualifications to hold the positions. And his answer to as to why he did that was because it's 2015. This is the same guy, the exact same liberal, who was instrumental in defeating shared parenting. He's a feminist that literally opposed equality. And they were successful. We do not have shared parenting in Canada. We have no legal presumption of equal parenting from the feminist. That pretty wow. much explains the whole, the whole problem right there. Yeah, like, I cannot imagine, like, a person who's, like, a president or a prime minister who's a feminist and not actually, you know, do something about things. But then again, I'm not surprised considering the attitudes from feminists in college campuses and in the media. Yeah, it's, it's gotten absolutely crazy. You know, I went to college in the late 1990s, early 2000s, and I didn't, ha you know, I called myself a feminist because it was about opportunity. And it was about opportunity, and it wasn't about blaming men for everything. Our heroes, the feminist cultural heroes, were like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Xena Princess Warrior and, and Sarah Connor in The Terminator. And just some really great kick-ass women. And it was about opportunity, but also respecting women's choices. You know, we want to make sure that if, if you can meet the standards, you're allowed to be a Navy SEAL. Sure. I mean, Demi Moore did it in the movie, right, G.I. Jane. Realistically, there's not very many women who want to be Navy SEALs, and that's okay. Nobody cares. At the time, it was fine. Now, feminism is all about uh, equal, like, they want equal outcomes, no matter, but only good outcomes. Only in, like, the good jobs. They want equal women in the boardroom at the waste management plant. They don't want equal numbers of women wearing rubber boots and shoveling shit in the sewers. That's fine if <laughs> Right, it only goes one way. <laughs> right, like, it's so strange. Like, when I first heard the word feminist, too, like, I thought, wait a second, doesn't that mean, like, a strong, independent woman? And then I realized just by the actions of the feminist that it's the complete opposite of what I thought originally feminism was supposed to be about. It's the complete opposite. They're having this big debate on Twitter today about Barbie and how if you don't have fat Barbies, um, <laughs> it's, 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 it
if you don't have fat Barbies, it's bad for little girls' body image. Like, <laughs> How much did G.I. Joe and Batman affect your body image? Like, do you go to sleep crying at night because you're not green and, and well-muscled? <laughs> right, like, I don't really care, like, what kind of shape and size a person is when they're, like, a character. Like, the most important thing when you watch, like, a TV show or a movie for characters is their personality and how they carry themselves, not the shape of their body. And I thought that girl is supposed to like Barbie, considering that Barbie's supposed to be like the ideal feminist. Well, what underpins the whole thing, what I find so interesting is there's boys are apparently these rational, intelligent little creatures who understand the difference between G.I. Joe and the Hulk in real life. And little girls are these fucking morons who can't tell the difference between Barbie and real life. Like there's such an <laughs> undercurrent of misogyny. They're calling little girls idiots. These, <laughs> Thank you, feminism, for having such a positive view of little girls. <laughs> yeah, and then they did the exact same thing with the dictionary. Like, I believe last week they actually complained about how rabbit had rabbit feminists in the dictionary definition. Yeah, they acted like rabid feminists to prove that they're not. Really <laughs> <laughs> really well done. Really well done, yeah. I went on my blog and I looked up all the various numbers of words to see how men fare in the dictionary. And, you know, Oxford treats men like just complete shit in the dictionary. And somehow, men are able to deal with that without throwing a fucking tantrum and acting like rabid idiots. <laughs> and also, um, speaking about which, like, what kind of stuff in regards to um, men's issues are problems within Canada? In Canada, I think the biggest issue is the same as in the United States. The one that affects men's lives most dramatically is the issue of what happens with children and money and resources when a relationship falls apart. The way we, ha we have the same situation as you have in the U.S., there's no shared parenting, there's no legal presumption that fathers are just as important as mothers. If guys want shared custody of their children, they have to go to court, pay lawyers to prove that they are as valuable as mothers. And that, that whole situation really makes me angry at feminists because they will bark and piss and shriek and moan that men need to do more housework, get off your ass, get up in the middle of the night with the baby, you should be doing half the childcare, you should be doing all of this stuff, there's no reason why you can't be doing half of all the work of running a house. And then there's a divorce and all of a sudden it's like, oh my god, men can't do any of this stuff, no way. What the <laughs> fuck? Can they get up with the baby in the night or can they not? You want to divorce your husband after you've just had a child? Fuck you. That kid's his too. Equal. Mom and dad are equally valid. And you see what happens to children who are raised without the regular influence of a father. They're just, they're feral. They're either feral or they're fucking spoiled little snot bag bitches. <laughs> right. It's kind of funny that you mentioned like people and father fatherlessness. Like, Within the black community, there's a lot of people who are not raised with a father, and so we don't really actually have a role model to look after when it comes down to getting raised in a family. And that's why many people actually go to crime instead of actually doing something productive in their life. It's absolutely tragic. Black children who are raised with a father in their lives have far better life outcomes than children who don't have a dad. Even if that dad is not a great dad, they still have better outcomes than children raised by single mothers, which is, it's not surprising though. I mean, the presence of a father in your life grounds you, sets boundaries for you. It's all the things that kids need. They absolutely need and they suffer enormously when they don't have it. Right, like, speaking as a person who never had a father in his life, like, it's, I'm kind of surprised that a lot of the stuff I do know, I actually learned through my mother and other people, not through my dad. However, I kind of wish that my father was in a much more bigger place in my life compared to what happened now. Yeah, I think a lot of people, Dean Esme, I like Dean Esme a lot. He gets a little crazy with his religious stuff, but he once uh, described every world religion as being the longing for a father. Every world religion is about having a male figure who loves you, but who sets rules for you, and who steps in. That it's a, one of the most profound longings in the human psyche is for the longing for a father. Right, like, speaking about religion, it seems as though that 
you could say that a lot of the men's issues since tend to come from religion like for example the idea of circumcision like within judaism like there are rabbi who chop half of a boy's penis and then they suck the blood from the penis for circumcision and the idea of circumcision seems to come from religion among other factors well, amongst the Jewish community, yeah, it's religiously based. It's still barbaric as hell. I think any Jewish guy should be able to cut his dick any way he wants, but that's a decision he gets to make for himself when he's 18. No one should be making that decision for a baby, in my opinion. And I suspect that the, all those Jewish men who can get through life without wearing yarmulkes and hair shirts, circumcision will go the way of a hair shirt if we make it illegal. They're still going to be Jewish. They're still going to practice their faith. They just won't be allowed to torture babies. But in terms of circumcision for the non-Jewish population, that came from Dr. Kellogg. Uh, yeah, the guy who made Kellogg. The cereal. <laughs> it did. It was, it was done um, to prevent boys from masturbating. And I'm, I don't think that worked. Right, but like speaking about Kellogg cereal, like no one buy Kellogg's after hearing that. Just don't buy it because they allow people to get circumcised. <laughs> well, he certainly promoted it. I'm not sure that that the original Dr. Kellogg has anything to do with General Mills at this point, but it was definitely it was promoted as a method of controlling male sexuality. Uh, Dr. Kellogg also thought it would be a good idea to put caustic acid on the clitorises of baby girls. To wow. Them. Yeah, yeah. We only took up the torturing the boy part. People were like absolutely aghast at what he wanted to do to girls. And we prevent Muslims from cutting the genitals of little girls, even though it's done for the exact same reason. It's meant to sexually control the person. It's meant to uh, reduce your sexuality. And if it's illegal for girls, why the hell is it legal for boys? And this whole thing like, oh, female genital mutilation is so much worse. That's like saying it's okay to cut a baby's toe off because cutting off the foot, it would just <laughs> <laughs> Right, like, it's kind of strange. Like, when you hear stories about, like, how people are okay with circumcision but not okay with, like, female genital mutilation, you kind of think in the back of your head that there are some double standards people have for girls compared to guys. Like the fact, like for an example, the circumcision, like people think it's okay to circumcise a guy compared to doing that to a girl. Not only that, but in the United States, I'm not sure about Canada, but in the United States, there's also the draft where people have to turn 18 and register for the draft. And it's also like females also outperform males within college courses and they actually get more degrees as a result of that. So it seems as though a lot of society tend to benefit women much more than guys. Absolutely. Although I would like to point out that while women in the U.S. do earn 12 million more college degrees, I think since, since the 1990s something, they've earned millions of more college degrees basically in bullshit, in feminist dance therapy. If you reduce universities to the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and management universities are overwhelmingly male still. They always have been. They always will be. Letting women go to get degrees in urban anthropology doesn't make them smarter. It's a waste of <laughs> money and time, and it makes for some interesting conversations while you're waiting for graduates of urban anthropology to fix your latte. But other than that... <laughs> Right, like, they, cl they complain that women earn less than guys, but then they come out and just do these gender studies courses, which make them learn less than guys. Right, and they also count someone like me in the statistics. Um, I don't, I have, I don't work full time. That's, that's an incredible privilege for me. That's an incredible luxury. So, feminists calculating the wage gap will take me as part of their stats call my income zero, and then claim that they're oppressed by not getting as much money as men. So they're taking something that is an extraordinary privilege. I am blessed to not have to work and to be able to stay at home and take care of our children and take care of our home. That's an extraordinary privilege for me, and they're turning it. They're using me to cry oppression and to whine about stuff and that really makes me want to punch them in the face. Right, like don't you think like every time they make these kind of victim narratives that it kind of removes women of their autonomy? 
Absolutely. It's the biggest reason why I reject feminism. I am not a toddler. I do not need safe spaces for scary ideas. I don't want coloring books. I don't need to consider myself the victim of anything. In fact, I'm not a victim of anything. And if you won't play the victim game, Oppression Olympics, as Shu on Head puts it, that video is hilarious, by the way. <laughs> Fantastic. But since I won't play the Oppression Olympics, I get attacked and harassed and abused by all of these feminists who try to find something that I'm a victim of. And they try and scream at me that I simply have, I have internalized misogyny. Apparently, I hate women because I don't <laughs> think I'm a victim. Right. Like, they do this all the time within, like, um, discussions about race. Like, they say that white men are evil and blacks are the oppressed. And they would say the same thing for women. Like, women are the oppressed and men are the oppressors. Yeah. And given how they treated all the gang rapes in Cologne, I mean, thirsty black guys might want to think about pulling one of those off. <laughs> You get the feminists backing you up. <laughs> <laughs> right, like what's going on right now in Europe is that they actually are in fact importing a real rape culture, but for some odd reason, feminists will not actually cry rape culture when it's out there. No, but they will cry for white guys to rock up and protect them. Why the fuck should they? I mean, you've raised your son in Europe for 20 years now to be complete pussies. You import a bunch of just wild people who have a very different concept of civil society and gender relations, and now you're screaming at the guys to stand up and fight for you? Like, those women are getting what they deserve, if you ask me. If you didn't speak out against all of the feminization of men that has been going on in Europe for 20 years, you made your bed, bitch. Enjoy it. <laughs> right, and not only that, but it's gotten so bad that in Norway, they had to teach men now not to rape because of these immigrants. You don't have to teach them not to rape. They know that rape is bad. They also know that no one's going to stop them. So who gives a fuck? I just heard today that Sweden's going to deport 80,000 of them. Wow. So let's, let's see how that goes. It, they have no <laughs> choice. Islam, in any form, is incompatible with modern liberal democracies. But if you wish to live under Islamic law, if you wish to live under Sharia law, you are incompatible with liberal democratic values. And these people, <laughs> gain, these people will gain political power. They will gain political power and they will institute Sharia law against the rest of the population. They're just, they're just sitting there like sheep. Right, they're, like there's actually Sharia courts in England, if I recall correctly. Madness, complete and utter madness. I have no idea what they're doing. Right, like... I cannot understand how anybody could defend Islam of all religions. Like, I don't like religion at all, but like, of all the religions to defend, you'll pick the religion that says kill the non believers, to crucify the non believers, to stone adulterers, all that madness of all the religions in the world. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's, it's beyond insane. I mean, if Islam is such a productive, great religion, why are all of their countries in utter shambles? It comes back to the doctrines. <laughs> yeah, it, it's ridiculous. I do not think that this religion is compatible. There are, there are, to be certain, many people in the Arabic world and in the Middle Eastern world that are not do not want to live under Sharia law. They want out. They're just a, as afraid of these maniacs as we should be, but apparently aren't. And we absolutely want to be a beacon of light and hope for those people, right? If you are trying to get away from the maniacs, we would like to give you refuge. But until we can figure out who's running away from the maniac, who actually is a maniac, we shouldn't be taking any of them. I agree with Donald Trump there. Close the borders until we know how to distinguish between who are the wing nuts and who are the people running away from the wing nuts. Right. Yeah. Like, I believe, like, according to the, um, the statistics from the um, European Union, like, I believe that the majority of migrants are not really from Syria, that the majority of them are from other countries. But Syria. Yeah, they're economic migrants, but it's really disingenuous to say that. Economic migrants suggest that they're just, they're trying to find a job in Europe, and that's only part of what they're trying to do. It is an invasion, and until Europe wraps its head around that, they're just not going to know how to respond. Okay, um, what kind of stuff that the uh, men's rights movement does in Canada? 
like usually people say all oh, the men's rights movement never does do anything so what kind of stuff do they do, 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 they do in canada well, we did have Earl Silverman who fought for a really long time to get a domestic violence shelter open for men. Um, I, I believe that we have a few beds available for male victims of domestic violence here, but we have no shelters dedicated just for um, men. And domestic violence is a gender crime in Canada as it is everywhere else. And it's a particularly, uh, it's a particularly violent and mutual crime in our Aboriginal communities. Native communities here have been utterly destroyed and devastated over hundreds of years, um, much to a much greater extent than the Native community in the United States, if you can believe that. We treated the Aboriginals even worse than, like, you guys just slaughtered them. We tortured them. <laughs> right, like, I believe from reports from international news, I hear stories of the aboriginals and different provinces have huge problems with alcohol and people don't like to have alcohol at all when it comes down to getting it yeah well right up until the 1990s what the government used to do was go into communities and take the children out put them in boarding schools cut their hair off force them to wear like um regular canadian clothes and beat them if they spoke their own language crazy that's absolutely yeah. crazy yeah, it was called residential schools, and in the in the late 1800s and early 1900s, a lot of these schools were run by religious orders, which raped and sexually abused and molested and just tortured these kids. And then once they graduated from school, they were simply sent back out into the community. Wow, that's absolutely crazy. Yeah, and if you've been raised without love and being raped and being violated, what do you think is going to happen? It just utterly destroyed the community. So domestic violence in the Aboriginal community is, is very much mutual. It's two deeply, profoundly, emotionally destroyed people taking drugs, taking alcohol, little kids in the mix, beating the shit out of each other, often killing each other. It's, it's really, really tragic, and yet we have women's groups in Canada insisting that it is never appropriate to provide shelter or provide assistance to, what? Yeah, to men who are involved in domestic violence. No, they insist that women are only ever the victim. They are never the perpetrator. Christ, like, how can he think this? Like, this is absolutely insane. It's the same thing going on in Australia, right? You have all of these crazy wingnuts Fat ass. Australia is home to the ugliest, fattest feminists I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know what, how you breed them up there, but Jesus, these bitches are ugly. Anyway, they're, they're screaming still at the top of their lungs that domestic violence is men beating women. And so far in 2016, we have four dead men, all killed by their partners, and zero dead women. Wow. Unbelievable. Still screaming that this is. Domestic violence is just men beating up women. Oh, funny. I guess that guy just accidentally ran into the knife while he was trying to attack her, eh? <laughs> like, do you think it also comes back to the Duluth model? Oh, the Duluth model is almost engineered. Well, it's called the Violence Against Women Act, right? So it automatically defines women as victims and men as perpetrators, all of which ignores Two really interesting things about domestic violence. Your best prediction of whether or not you're going to experience domestic violence as a woman is whether or not you hit men. You throw the first punch, he's likely going to punch you back. And women who don't hit men are extremely unlikely to experience domestic violence. Interesting in that study is that if a guy is in a relationship with a violent woman and they hit each other, she hits him, he hits her back, it's just a mess. Then he goes on to have another relationship with a different woman. There will be no domestic violence in that relationship, provided she doesn't hit first. You want to end a significant amount of domestic violence, teach women not to hit men. That's kind of funny, like, because people say, oh, men should not hit women, but women are allowed to hit men. And this is like the double standard that we have in our culture. Like, it's okay for me to hit an other guy back if I want to defend myself, but if a woman wants to hit me, I cannot defend myself against her. That's right. The Duluth model says you're, you're likely to get arrested for that if you do. The Duluth model is engineered to make sure that the bigger partner 
ends up getting arrested. That's almost always the man. So even if she sticks an ax in your head, they'll take you to the ER to remove the ax, and then you know they'll arrest you for domestic violence. And that that's absolutely ridiculous. And it's it's very very typical of feminists. We want to be equal, but we also want to be special. Like we're not giving up any of our privileges. We're, I'm absolutely equal to you in, let's say, combat. We can go to combat, but if you hit me, that's bad because I'm a girl and I'm sexy. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, as CMSL, like, when it comes down to some, certain workplaces, right, like, they're trying to lower down the standards for women compared to guys. Like, I remember hearing a story last year where there was, like, a woman who wants to be a firefighter, and they had to lower down the standards for her to actually be a firefighter. And didn't she get injured her very first day on the job? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, ridiculous. Okay, this is what I think. If you support uh, women firefighters who can't meet the standards, let's be clear. If you are a woman and you can meet the standards, by all means, join the fire brigade. Um, but for women, if you support firefighters who can't meet, meet those standards, I think you should have a giant red F on your house. So if it's ever on fire, those women that you supported are coming to help you. Right, like we should actually treat them the same. Like we should not actually lower down the standards just to accommodate women. If we want to treat women as equals, actually, you know, treat them as equal with the same requirements for being a firefighter. Yeah, and you know what? Eventually, we're going to see women firefighters just burn to death and die in fires because they're not qualified to be there. They can't save other people and they can't save themselves. And it's suicide. It's suicide just for political gain. All they want is the salary because firefighters get paid a fairly decent amount as they should. It's just political grandstanding that is ultimately going to cost people their lives. People in the house who are on fire, other firefighters, and the woman herself. This is like throwing women into combat positions. Okay, good luck. I want to see you with a bayonet going up against troops in the Middle East. It's going to be a slaughter. <laughs> right, like, I guess if a person saw a woman in combat, they're more likely to cons be concerned about the woman compared to the enemy in front of them because they want to help out the woman and not shoot the enemy down. Well, I don't know about that. Maybe in the heat of battle, that's true. But, you know, you don't have to integrate the troops. It's two different issues. Like, don't integrate the troops. Just make all, have all the women be in one troop and all the men be in the other troop. But that, that female troop is just going to get slaughtered on the battlefield absolutely slaughtered that's just crazy like um any final words before we end the stream like i really enjoyed this chat um no thank you so much for having me and and i do want to recount to you um i made this decision this is i i chatted with gamergate quite extensively about whether or not I should, <laughs> about whether or not i should let my kids play grand theft auto because I oh know, like, oh um <laughs> let me see um how old are your kids my son is, uh, he'll be 10 in a few days, my daughter's 14. Um, I would probably wait for uh, the little guy to be a little older for that, but your daughter, yes. My daughter loves it, she loves it too, and my son is allowed to, um, he's allowed to play it, but he has to stay out of the strip bar, and <laughs> he does! <laughs> he actually does! He came to me yesterday and he's like, Mom, Mom, I need to go in the strip bar, I'm just going to shake these guys down, taunt them a bit, and kill them, that's all I'm going to do, okay? I'm like, no, no, don't go to the store. <laughs> go, go, rob, go rob a store, hijack some cars. I don't care what you do. Go run over people on the boardwalk. But stay out of the strip pub. <laughs> <laughs> and You're like, hard. <laughs> I cannot believe like, the doctors try to censor you, too. Well, I, I don't know about that. Um, the last word that I have is that the episode will be rescheduled. Um, I have no date for that. So I, I really don't know. I, I mean, I hope I hope that they're going to play the episode because it was really amazing. The reaction from the audience and the support I got from the doctors. And I really hope that that episode goes ahead. It would be fantastic for people to see it. Yeah, me too. I, I really want to see that episode. But anyway, thanks again for coming on my channel. It's a really good pleasure to talk to you finally. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.